Okay, give me your name and your... Okay, my name is Bill Starr, and I've lived here in Ellenwood uh, for uh, 33 years and everything. And we had the antique shop here, and six years ago, we purchased the uh, underground, which is across the street, which is where we're, we're going to be taking it. But, first we'll give you a little history of why we have the underground and what it is all about and everything. Now, the Ellenwood was slated to be a German town, and it was slated to, to be a, a German town, and the Germans that came here to settle our town all came from the Munich area. Have any of you ever been to Munich? Okay. Did, uh, have you ever experienced the underground in Munich? Right in the center of town. They have a little underground city. Mm -hmm. But underneath the train station? I don't know exactly where it is myself. But it's in that area, mm -hmm. probably. Okay, okay. So you you are full-blooded German, are you? Yes. Oh, good for you. Good uh, for you. I love it. I, I love lived it. in Munich. Did I you don't really? I know about the underground. Okay. Uh, well, we love Germans. We love Germans here <laughs> and everything. And Germans are are very very unique, very very clever, very very wonderful people, and, and everything. You bet. Now, but when the Germans came here and everything. They came here in the covered wagons, of course. And the thing of it is, is that when they got here and everything, something was going on out here that really just upset them greatly and everything. The wind was blowing. As you know, in Kansas, the wind blows all the time. Well, in Germany, the wind doesn't hardly blow at all because, of course, Germany sits way down in here with the Alps Mountains going all the way around, which, which takes care of the winds, more or less. Okay, so, they think, gee whiz, what are we going to do with all this wind situation? This is terrible, and everything. There's no trees out here in the middle of the prairie to slow the winds down or anything, which also presents a problem. There's no trees to make, to cut down to build our town with. So what are we going to build our town with? Well, they go three blocks south of town here and start find a very rich vein of clay and start manufacturing bricks. And if you look out this window here, all you're going to see is brick. You're going to see brick streets, brick buildings, brick everything. We have a two-block town, which is what we exactly what we laid out in the 1870s and 1880s as a two-block town, and that's exactly what we are today. It's a two-block town. We haven't grown a darn bit, but we are a brick town. Now, when they built our town, they built it, as I say, in the two blocks, and they decided they were going to go down as well as up, because this is what they had at home. And don't we do a lot of things like we had at home? Of course we do a lot of things like we did at home, but not as, maybe not as many as our parents would like for us to have done, but we still do a lot of things like that. So, when they went down, they put businesses down there. Only businesses, though, for the men. They didn't put their homes down there or anything, but all the businesses down here were all related for the men. Women did not go to the underground. If a woman went to the underground, she would have been classified as a soiled dove. Mm -mm -mm. So, but, you know what? We had a lot of them go. <laughs> because this highway right out here, Highway 56, this is the Santa Fe Trail. Now, of course, the Santa Fe Trail, we're going to refresh your memory just a minute about that. The Santa Fe Trail started in a little town right outside of Columbia, Missouri. It was called Franklin, Missouri. Went all the way to Santa Fe, New Mexico, buying and selling cattle. Well, when they got to Santa Fe, New Mexico, they would sell off all their cattle, take the money that they got for their cattle, and invest it into lumber that the lumberjacks had brought out of the mountains fill their covered wagons up with lumber and bring it back and sell those poor people in Kansas that don't have any trees and then go back to Missouri and start all over again. The Santa Fe Trail never stopped. It just kept going all the time. The Santa Fe Trail was a business. It was a money trail. It wasn't a trail that uh, people went to Homestead or anything. They went on like the Oregon Trail and the trails through Nebraska and everything for the for the uh, to find their homesteads and everything, but this was a business, and it 
depending on how uh, much money the wagon master had, depended on how many wagons he had in his own wagon train. Because sometimes the wagon master owned six, eight, ten wagons in his own wagon train. Then, they were coming right through here. So, you know what? We are Germans. And the thing of it is, if you've ever been to Germany, you would know if you sit down to have a meal in Germany, what's the first thing they're going to bring you? A beer. So, what is the first thing they're going to build when they get here? Is a brewery. Which happens to be the triangular brick building right down the way, on the other side of the street, about a block and a half. Now, the thing of it is, is, is that, and, and we will get closer to that uh, on the tour. Now, when we, uh, so we are busy making schnapps and beers and all those good old German drinks and everything. Well, you know, I told you about the Santa Fe Trail coming through. Well, we have 100 cow or 100 covered wagons a day coming through on the Santa Fe Trail. We're down to 100. We have been as high as 400 wagons a day coming through town. But in 1880, there's something going <clears throat> on called the railroad. So the railroad is taking the business away from the um, wagon master. So the thing of it is, we are down to 100 covered wagons a day coming through town. The historians tell us we have five cowboys per wagon or we have a total of 500 different cowboys every day coming through town. Now, not only do we have the 500 cowboys, but we have 200 railroad workers every day coming through town. So, we have a total of 700 men coming through our town every day who all love beer. <laughs> they all love what we're doing here and everything. And so, now, I showed you where the brewery was, and right behind the brewery, there's a large group of trees. And that large group of trees, there's a loop in the river. And uh, that is the Arkansas River coming up. So, now, this is a great place where the wagon master can stop his wagons and water his livestock, water his cattle that he's driving and everything, and spend the night. Because... This is a nice, low, flat place. It's a nice, safe place and everything. And that way, he can get his cattle all herded up and, and his horses all tethered down and, and everything. And he can walk to town, which is only half a block. He can have a beer in this hand. He can have a soil dove under this arm. He's in hog heaven. I mean, what more could a cowboy want? So, we have our two-block town here and our two-block town is, is uh, we have two entrances to the, in, uh, to the underground at the end of every block. So we have two, four, six, eight main entrances to the underground and everything. Now, of the eight main entrances to the underground, only three are visible today. One of them, as we go out the door here, I will point out to you, and the other two are down the street. Mm -hmm. So, let's go ahead and go across the street because we're going to go under the white building across the street, the one that has the 1887 on it. And we're going to go it. It's saying here, in the climate, the climate in the state of Kansas on a hot summer day could reach 85 degrees. Breathing the air in the state of Kansas is like breathing pure champagne. Uh, snowfall in the state of Kansas could range up to two inches per year. Well, gee whiz, <laughs> those are just all a bunch of baloney, <laughs> because uh, uh, we all know that isn't true. Yeah, but it worked. They got them here. And it worked. They got them here. But when they got here, lo and be here, hold, here they came carrying this great big old immigrant's trunk, this great big old trunk that had all their pots, their pans, their dishes, their bedding, their clothing, their food, everything they owned is in this trunk. And it probably took them six months or excuse me, six weeks to two months to get here. And can you imagine putting everything you own in a big trunk and bringing it halfway around the world? What would you do with your shoes? I mean, yeah, right, that's right. But the thing of it is, is, is that here they came. And maybe a couple little kids trail along behind. They were on their way to the land of milk and honey. They got here. It's 110 degrees, the wind is blowing, it doesn't rain, there are no trees, 
and we have to make our houses out of sod because we, there's nothing to cut down to build tree or build our homes with or anything. And we have to share our homes with snakes and everything. These were strong, really, really strong people. Bless their souls, they stayed and, and, and everything because they had spent all their money getting here. They had to stay. These people had to be the bravest people in the world. They really did. And now, and in 1882, here come the grasshoppers and the locusts. They were so bad and so thick that when they opened their screen door to get out, they would sneak in. And when they, they would eat their tablecloth, they'd eat the paper off the wall. But the thing that they ate that hurt them the worst of all was they ate their gardens. They ate their food supply. So this was really rough. Now, this looks like something the ladies would have in their bedrooms today as an exercise machine. But of course, back then, it was a grinder, and we'll just tear it. We get this good and sharp, then we give it to the young man in the family and say, go out and cut the yard. This is the very first lawnmower, of course. So, now, the thing of it is, we have the two, we have the big sickles along here and everything. Three weeks ago the men would have been cutting wheat with those and they say a good man can cut three acres of wheat a day. Now this was very, very important because the cowboy would take this and he would, it's very heavy, and he would take this and he would tie that, <laughs> yes right, on his saddle, uh, on his, and everything, and he would uh, put it on the buckboard seat right beside him if he was in the buckboard and everything. Why do you think this is so important? Very, very important. Place to tie your horse. That's absolutely right. There's no trees out here and everything, so you had to have a tether to tie. A little boy told me the other day it was a horse anchor. <laughs> <laughs> and he was absolutely right. Well, I've got to get a picture of this chain, too. Now, of course, these are your fly nets for your horses. You would wear, the horses would wear these, uh, the teams of horses would wear these and, and everything. And as they walked, they would shimmy and shake and knock the flies off. And of course down here, we have a pair of chaps. And these chaps are what the cowboy would wear and, and everything. And of course he wore these over his jeans so that he would be able to uh, uh, save his jeans because he probably only had two pair of jeans and that was about it. Now, of course, here are the fly nets and you're welcome to touch if you would like it. Of course, see your fly nets are your very first macrame. Now, this is a wagon or wagon umbrella. This is from the Mangelsdorf Brothers store here in Allenwood and the Mangelsdorf Brothers store burned in 1908. And here is a cage for the first bank of Allenwood and uh, that bank of Ellenwood is right above our heads. So we're going to come out here, so just leave the door open and follow me. We are under the sidewalks of Ellenwood now. We are in the tunnels. Now, we have to remember, folks, that the tunnels went for two blocks. Okay. As you can see, the tunnels are two-sided. This side here was used for storage. That side over there was used for walking. Okay, now, the thing of it is, is, is that uh, the tunnels was only this tall here, but it was this tall over here. So we had a, and the sidewalk back then, of course, was wooden. So we have a nice sloped, sloped to side it. to it to take care of those two inches of snow we're going to have during the winter. Below. The only two inches of snow <laughs> you're going right. to have. Now, the thing of it is, this side over here was used for storage, that's for walking. If you notice all the big doors along here, well, everyone that had a business in this building had their own storage unit. There was a wall going across here, there's a wall going across here with the door. These storage units were called coal bins because we needed coal to, uh, for heat in the winter time. And we got the coal from the 
from the railroad when they, when they were bringing the coal cars in from Illinois. So, now we happen to be standing in the coal bin for the bank of Ellenwood. The bank decides they need two ton of coal for the winter. So they send two men in a wagon over to the train station to get the coal. They're sitting out here right now. They jump out of their wagon, they take their hammer and their pry bar, and they start jerking up the sidewalk. There it is, there it is, there's our coal bin. Then they drop the coal down into the coal bin, and when they're done, they nail the sidewalk back down and go on their way. I think it was just neater than heck, because see, coal is just very, very expensive. A big hunk of coal like this is like 50 cents. That's a lot of money when a man's working for a dollar a day. So people have to keep their coal under lock and key because it runs off. By <laughs> two-legged run off. So the thing of it is, is, is that uh, everything is just under security. So we've got our coal all secured down here and everything. Everything's going fine and everything until 1925. In 1925, something happens in our state to, to just upset the whole balance of this and everything. It happens in a little town called Hugoton. What do you think happened in Hugoton in 1925? Discovery of oil. No. Natural gas. Natural gas. Natural gas. Absolutely. Gas. Gas comes to Kansas. Wow. You can get gas piped into your buildings, into your businesses and everything for 25 cents on the dollar what you're paying for coal. Gas is so reasonable, so cheap, and so... One of these pools is 100 miles long. We're never going to run out of it. It's almost dry today. But the thing of it is, is that oh, this gas is wonderful. The blue flame, no black smoke, everything. Oh, Ellenwood's cooking with gas. And, and everything. It's just wonderful. And so here we are. Now, this goes, so this goes belly up. Nobody wants coal anymore. And that's the main reason why the tunnels did not survive, was because if we were still using coal, we'd still be using these things. Probably would be. But we don't need them anymore. So they're obsolete. Now, the Hornets man wants to sell his business. He calls in the young men. The young men look at the business and say, this stuff is all for horses. We want it. We have tractors coming on. We, want, we, we don't want this stuff and everything. So the thing of it is, that's like if I were to call in the kids today that say, well, where are the computers? How do you get on the web? You know, uh, I mean, we're trying to sell a typewriter business today. <laughs> that's right. That is exactly right. The, and, and everything. So. The old timers can't sell their business, so what do they do? They have to just nail the door shut, padlock them, and, and walk off. And thank goodness they left what they did behind so we could have, have a look see of what it was all about back then. So, theoretically speaking, we cannot walk down through here because we've got all the walls going across and we're full of coal. So, if you'll follow me, we'll just walk down this passage right here because this is the uh, way that they walk. And of course, these were big glass windows that, that had to be bricked in because uh, the, they didn't want uh, these big windows because they were scared to death that they would break and somebody would get hurt or something. So that's the way that is. These are the big doors that they used to, for their coal. That they had their coal now, we're slowly going to work our way down here. And look at this beautiful milled stone. That's just beautiful. And this is where we would have gone across the street to where you got me. Mm -hmm. This is one of the entrances that's filled in. Mm -hmm. One of the eight isn't available anymore. Now, we're going to go in here and we're going to go into the barber shop. Quite a mirror. Uh -huh. Now, can I use your uh, your lady in the barber chair? Was she? Did you be... sit in the barber chair? Yeah, yeah. 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 just sit in the barber chair and let me do your hair. That would be great. You bet. <laughs> okay. Now we have. Okay. Now I want to show you what we're going to do here. We're going to 
give you a haircut. And this is what we're going to use for your hair here. I'm not really going to attach to you. Anyway, these were called cut two, pull three. In other words, they really hurt when you, when you were getting a haircut. Now, you didn't realize it when you sat in the chair, but the barber pole is, is turning round and round up.